Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll delve into the events that occurred in Chicago, Illinois, in May 2013. Two brothers, Jose Reyes Ramos and Jorge Moncada Ramos, moved to Chicago from Honduras, hoping to find a way out of poverty and help the family financially. On May 25, 2013, Jorge came to the police and filed a missing person report. Four days before that, his brother sent him a text message with only one word, muerte, which means death in Spanish. He then stopped responding to messages. His phone was not reachable. That was the last time Jose got in touch with his brother. Jose Reyes Ramos and Jorge Moncada Ramos grew up in Tegucigalpa, Honduras. Born in 1984, Jose had three siblings. He was the oldest child. Jose's father left when he was young, so he helped his mom raise his younger siblings. In 2008, Jose went to Chicago, Illinois to live with Jorge, who had moved there a few years earlier. Both brothers sent money to their family in Honduras and hoped that one day their mother would come to America too. The brothers worked at various construction sites. They worked from morning to night, sending almost all the money to the family. Fortunately, the hard work wasn't for nothing, and Jose created his own apartment renovation business. He had advanced tremendously in the construction business. He started to be his own boss. He was learning how to fix apartments, making progress daily in his craft. His cousin, Angela Martinez, said of Jose. At the same time, while Jose was climbing the career ladder, Jorge started dating a girl named Daisy Gutierrez. Her parents emigrated from Mexico to the United States before she was born. She was a single mother. Having dropped out of school after having a child, she devoted her life to motherhood. However, she wanted to finish her studies to find a good job. Daisy's friend, Miranda Lucas said, she loved being a mom. I think she was just struggling because she was very young and trying to find that balance. I know she was living with her dad and her mom, so they helped her quite a bit. Jorge and Daisy were inseparable from the very first meeting. Daisy was sweet and friendly. She dreamed of a loving husband and a happy family. Jorge accepted another man's child and was willing to raise it as his own. But Daisy's parents didn't like Jorge and treated him with prejudice. Over the next few years, Jorge and Daisy had two more children. Daisy gave birth to two sons one year apart. Jorge was happy, but this happiness did not last long. Meanwhile, Jose tried to be a caring uncle. He spent a lot of time with his brother's family. Jose enjoyed communicating with his nephews and giving them gifts and other necessities. He often helped Daisy by supporting her and helping her raise the children. However, it often happens that a man and a woman become colder to each other after they have children together. They get bored with the daily routine, their feelings fade away, and it becomes frustrating to be with each other. Daisy and Jorge were no exception. Every time there was a problem, she didn't attempt to find a solution. The relationship was in shambles, said Jorge, describing his relationship with Daisy. In the end, Jorge and Daisy decided to break up. Jose helped Daisy raise the children because they were his nephews. Jose had a great future. He worked hard. He already had his own business, which he wanted to develop even more. While Jorge was busy building his personal life, Jose continued to climb the career ladder. On May 21, 2013, Jorge received a bizarre message from his brother, Jose. The message contained only one word, muerte. After that, Jose did not answer any calls or messages. Jorge was worried that it was a threat or that something terrible might have happened. However, he tried to calm himself down. After his brother had not been in touch for four days, Jorge contacted the police and filed a missing persons report. Detectives immediately started checking his place of work, family in Honduras, home in the United States, airports and locations where friends had last seen him. Jose was nowhere to be found. He hasn't been in touch since May 21st. Jose didn't have a car. The man always used public transport. According to Jorge, Jose left on a bus to go somewhere on May 21st, but it was unclear where exactly. That was the last time anyone saw him. On June 7th, 2013,
Police received records of Jose's phone conversations. They showed that his phone was inactive after he sent a text message with the word muerte. They also revealed that he exchanged flirtatious text messages with Daisy Gutierrez. The police used cell towers to determine the phone's location. It turned out that when Jose sent his last text message, his phone was near the house of Daisy Gutierrez's parents. Having learned that Jose and Daisy were not just friends, the investigators decided to interrogate Jorge. They thought Jorge might be jealous because his brother was secretly in a relationship with Daisy, his ex-girlfriend, and the mother of his two sons. But Jorge said he and Daisy had barely spoken to each other since their relationship ended on a sour note. Moreover, Jorge knew that Jose was in love with Daisy. It wasn't a secret to him, but he wasn't happy about it. Jorge indicated to me that Jose was madly in love with Daisy. His brother and him were at odds over the fact that Jose wanted to date his ex-girlfriend and essentially become a surrogate father to Jorge's two children, said Chicago police detective Hector Matias. While police briefly considered Jorge a potential suspect, they ultimately ruled him out. He was genuinely upset and worried about his brother's fate. Jorge was honest about everything he knew and was willing to cooperate with the police. It is important to note that Jorge's testimony remained unchanged throughout the investigation. It may indicate the truthfulness and reliability of his story. In addition, he strongly advised detectives to pay attention to Daisy. According to him, she threatened him and Jose during their last meeting. Perhaps she didn't mean anything serious, or her words had no malicious intent. But now, after Jose's disappearance, it raised too many questions. Jorge described the full cycle of his relationship with Daisy in just a few sentences. Here's what he told investigators. We met at the laundromat. We liked each other. Everything was great at first, but Daisy was very jealous. I loved her, but her family disliked me. Her mother threatened me. She wanted me to stay away from her daughter, and Daisy threatened me to stay with her. I was at a crossroads. That's why we broke up nine months ago. After the breakup, she looked for me, threatened me, and we fought every day. She told me, if you start dating another woman, you'll regret it. The last time I saw her was on my birthday, and she told me that I would pay for everything I did to her. She sent me a text that said, I'm going to destroy you, and you'll see how. When I saw her threats, I changed my phone number because I didn't want to communicate with her. Therefore, in one way or another, all the versions of what happened to Jose led the investigators to Daisy. At the time of Jose's disappearance, Daisy Gutierrez lived with her parents in southwest Chicago. It's the exact place Jose sent his last message from. The detectives went to Daisy's parents' house. However, Daisy wasn't there. The only people in the house were her children and mother. When asked where Daisy was, her mother replied that she had no idea where her daughter might be. She looked annoyed and worried that Daisy had left the children at their house and left without saying anything or contacting them. And the fact that the police had visited their house only increased her worries. Detectives asked the woman to contact Daisy if she didn't want them to return later to check if she had come home. The detectives didn't hear from Daisy and Jose for the next few weeks. There was no information about their whereabouts and the police were at a dead end. The phone numbers they received from Daisy's mother in the hope of contacting her daughter were unavailable. Therefore, the detective turned to Daisy's mother again and asked her to find a way to contact her daughter. The woman replied that she would try her best. On August 3, 2013, two months after Jose went missing, Daisy Gutierrez finally contacted the police and talked to detectives. She said she moved to New Jersey to be with her new boyfriend, 22-year-old Milton Miranda, whom she met on a dating site. Daisy allegedly had not seen Jose since leaving Chicago. She said she left for New Jersey by bus. It was around the same time he disappeared. When asked if her new boyfriend Milton had ever been to Chicago, Daisy replied, No, he's never been to Chicago. It was a lie as the police found two purchased bus tickets from New Jersey to Chicago. A week later, on August 10th, Daisy called Detective Hector Matias again and said she would meet him when she returned to Chicago from New Jersey. During the meeting, 
The detective decided to tell Daisy that the place from where Jose sent his last message was near her home. After hearing this, she invited the detective to take a walk. Detective Matias noticed that her behavior had changed rapidly. From a cheerful and sweet girl, she transformed into someone who wanted to convince him of something. Daisy admitted to seeing Jose on May 21st. She said that Jose came to her house to bring clothes and other necessary things for the children, and they decided to take a walk near the house. But then, they were suddenly attacked by four men who, according to Daisy, were members of a South American gang. They put them in a car, told them to shut up, and started beating Jose, and then drove them to a forest preserve southwest of Chicago. Upon arrival in the forest, those men told Daisy and Jose to get out of the car. Daisy told the detective that they had taken Jose's life right before her eyes, but that's not all. Daisy claimed that after Jose died, those men buried him in the forest. Moreover, she said they put the fragments in several garbage bags. I think you understand what happened to Jose's body after he died. According to Daisy, she managed to escape. She claimed that Jose was the gang's target, which is why she survived. Daisy also said she was too scared to tell the police what happened. She was afraid that the same thing that happened to Jose might happen to her. The story Daisy told was very suspicious because some details made the detectives doubt the consistency and truthfulness of her words. However, this gave additional opportunities and ways to investigate. In any case, Daisy's testimony had to be verified. The police sent a group of detectives and search dogs to the forest, where, according to Daisy, the events she described took place. Yet, they found absolutely no traces or evidence to confirm Daisy Gutierrez's story. Weeks passed, but there were no new leads. Jose Reyes Ramos seemed to disappear into thin air. He didn't contact anyone, didn't use his bank account, and never turned on his phone again. It looked like the investigation had reached a dead end. But two months later, the case took an unexpected turn. On October 4, 2013, Detective Matias received another call from Daisy. She said that she was lying. She said she couldn't sleep at night. She wanted to tell the truth, said Matias, describing that call. Daisy's second story sounded very different from the first one. She was three months pregnant, and the father of her unborn child was Milton Miranda, with whom she had already broken up. According to her, before Jose disappeared, he constantly texted her and hoped they would become a couple but she was already in a relationship with Miranda at that time. When Miranda found out about these messages, he was angry, but kept it together. It was May, and Daisy was in New Jersey, where Miranda worked and lived. One day, she told him she needed to return to Chicago to see her family and asked him to come with her. It made him angry. He thought she was going to Chicago to meet Jose, but Daisy told Miranda that she wasn't interested in Jose. I'll prove it to you, I'll call him over here, and when he gets here, you can beat him up," Daisy said. On May 21st, Daisy invited Jose to her parents' house. Before that, she told her family to leave the house. Milton Miranda hid in her bedroom closet. When Jose arrived, she invited him into the bedroom and tried to seduce him by dancing and taking off her clothes. Jose relaxed and did not suspect that it was a trap. He wasn't ready for what happened next. Miranda jumped out of the closet and started beating Jose with a metal pipe. According to Daisy, she thought Milton was going to beat up Jose a little, but he took Jose's life. Milton grabbed a knife, and Jose had no chance to leave the house alive. Daisy said she made up the gang story because she feared for her life. At that moment, Daisy realized that Milton Miranda was a dangerous man. She was afraid that Miranda would do to her what he had done to Jose if she went to the police. The detectives didn't know whether they could trust Daisy. After all, she was trying to put all the blame on Miranda. On the other hand, she did not deny her involvement in the incident and told about her actions. As I already said, the detectives questioned her version of events. Daisy says that she thought that he was just going to beat him up. I don't believe that. You know, you don't have a knife and a pipe ready just to beat someone up," Detective Hector Matias said. During further interrogation, 
Daisy eventually confessed that she was an accomplice in taking Jose's life. Unable to handle the pressure, she said, Okay, yes, I knew that the only way to get him out of my life was to get rid of him, so I knew that he was going to pop out of the closet and stab him. Seeing Jose lying on the bed without signs of life, she asked Miranda only one question. What are we going to do now? The calmness with which she reacted to the unforeseen events, which, as she previously said, were an absolute surprise to her, may indicate that she knew and was ready for what would happen to Jose. Daisy told investigators that while Jose was lying on her bed, she contacted her father, Salvador Gutierrez, instead of calling 911. When her father returned home, he and Milton Miranda started destroying evidence. But first, they got rid of Jose. After what Miranda did to Jose's body, they had to use several garbage bags, in each of which they put different fragments. Salvador Gutierrez spent three hours digging a hole in his backyard and then watched Miranda put garbage bags in that hole. Then they got rid of the mattress on which Jose died. According to Daisy, her father bought two tickets to New Jersey and told her never to return. After arriving in New Jersey, the couple couldn't continue their relationship. Milton was beside himself with what he had done. He was both puzzled and surprised. Daisy tried to calm him down, telling him everything would be fine. But Milton didn't feel worried and didn't need her support. Tired of Daisy's obsession and excessive care, he broke up with her. She was angry at him and decided to take revenge. Daisy returned to Chicago and told the police what had happened to Jose. On October 4, 2013, Investigators and criminologists came to the Gutierrez family to search their home. There, they found the remains of Jose in the garden. Investigators also found small dark red spots on various objects in Daisy's bedroom. They sent the evidence they found on the premises to the lab for further analysis. It showed that the remains found in the backyard belonged to Jose Ramos. His DNA was also in Daisy's bedroom. Police officers arrested Daisy and her father. Salvador Gutierrez. Salvador admitted that he knew about what happened to Jose and did not deny that he was the one who dug the hole. However, he said the reason he didn't call the police was because he was afraid of Milton and his gang ties. He told the police what happened that night when Daisy called him. She asked him to come home to help with something. When he arrived, she said, I gotta show you something in the bedroom. There, he saw Jose's body lying face up on her bed it was evident that he was dead. According to Salvador, they convinced him to help destroy the evidence by saying Jose bothered Daisy and stalked her. He believed that he was helping his daughter avoid trouble. Police believed Daisy's motive was to seek revenge on Jorge, the father of her two sons. They also thought that she wanted to impress Milton Miranda. Daisy Gutierrez, 19, and her father, Salvador Gutierrez, 56, were charged in the Jose Reyes Ramos case. Police started searching for Milton Miranda. They checked his last residence place in New Jersey, but no one was there. There was also a high risk of Miranda escaping since he came to the United States from Honduras. He could have easily left the country, and then the Chicago police wouldn't have been able to bring him to justice. Fortunately, detectives from New Jersey managed to catch Miranda in Morristown, New Jersey. He had previously had problems with the local police there. They arrested Miranda at the bakery he worked at. He planned to leave the country the next day. He was extradited to Chicago to stand trial on charges of first-degree deprivation of life. During the interrogation, Miranda slammed his hands on the table and told the detective, Fine. You know, I'll just tell you what happened. He confessed that he took Jose's life. He seemed proud of it and said that what he did to Jose after his death he learned as a gang member in Honduras. He also said he wanted to show Daisy that she was safe with him and that he could protect her. That's how he decided to express his love to her. He had absolutely no remorse for what he had done. The police didn't charge Daisy with taking Jose's life. Her charges were related to what happened to Jose's body after his death. She took part in it too. Daisy Gutierrez accepted a plea deal and agreed to testify against Miranda. In April 2016, the court sentenced her to 16 years in prison. Her father, Salvador Gutierrez, a Mexican citizen, 
tried to justify his actions in court. He said, I had to do whatever I needed to do to protect my daughter and to get rid of this evidence and to get rid of this guy who, according to Daisy, has been bothering her for a while. His motive was to protect Daisy because she was in danger. Another reason for his actions was fear of Milton's gang and the consequences if he refused. He was afraid for his life and the safety of his family. The court sentenced Salvador Gutierrez to 20 years in prison. We'll talk more about Salvador a little later. When Milton Miranda found out that Daisy had made a deal with the authorities and would testify against him, he pleaded guilty to first-degree deprivation of life and what he subsequently did to Jose's body. The court sentenced him to 30 years in prison. But there's one question that remained unanswered. Who sent the last message with only one word, muerte, from Jose's phone, and what was its purpose? We don't know for sure if Jose was trying to say what just happened to him, but I'm still under the belief that he did that before he passed away. I've never learned anything different, said Chicago Police Detective Mark Levitt. Upon the case's closing and the verdict's announcement, Jose's cousin, Angela Martinez, said, Personally, I think that Jose should be remembered as that humble and reserved young man, like that loving uncle, like a young man who was dedicated to his family to help his own pull through. That's how I want him to be remembered. Daisy Gutierrez was released in June 2021 after serving eight out of 16 years. After serving eight years in the Illinois Department of Corrections, Salvador Gutierrez was deported to Mexico in February 2021. However, he decided to return to the United States illegally, but was arrested by Border Patrol agents while trying to cross the border. Shortly after, Agents discovered the details of Gutierrez's problems with the law. He was remanded to the U.S. Attorney's Office. According to the latest information about Salvador Gutierrez, he was in custody, filing applications for asylum, withholding of removal, and deferral of removal. Do you think the sentences in this case were too lenient? Share your opinion in the comments and thank you for watching this video to the end.